and welcome to WOWcast. Today we're going to talk about The War Within, which alpha starts soon. I have two special guests with me today. Please introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Ian, Game Director on WOW. I'm Tina, Associate Art Director on WOW. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Before we talk about Alpha, what can you summarize about The War Within, Ian? Well, so The War Within, I mean, of course, it is the 10th expansion to well-known <laughs> video game World of Warcraft. But even, I think, more special to us, it's the beginning of the World Soul Saga. It's the beginning of probably the most ambitious story we've ever tried to tell in WoW. Uh, so as you know, all expansions do, it kicks off with a journey to a new place. But really, this is going to be beginning to set the stage and establish the stakes for a conflict that threatens not just you know, ourselves and, and our families and those we hold dear, but the very world that we call home, the very world beneath our feet that's been home to all of our adventures. And if we don't win this one, nothing else matters. So this character has been everywhere for the War Within. Zelatath. She's purple. She's amazing. Can you tell us more about her? Yeah, Zalatath is uh, you know one of our key villains of the World Soul Saga. The expansion is I mean part of it is this journey uh, delving deeper, find Zalatath and her allies, and uh, the inspiration uh, for her design from an art side was really based on the uh, priest artifact weapon that she had been trapped in for so long. So if you look at her armor, like all the motifs of you know her belt, her shoulders, really take inspiration from that uh, design. Uh, even the runes on her cheeks. Uh, those are a homage to Nizoth, who freed her from the dagger. Ah, uh, Naifu. Yeah, so if later on in War Within you find yourself, you know, wiping to a raid somewhere, just blame the Shadow Priests for not just putting the knife down, yeah, why didn't walk they away put from the talking dagger, and oh. we wouldn't be here. Oh my and gosh. yet... Um, are there any other familiar faces that we can recognize? Uh, yeah, some of the key uh, heroes of our story are uh, Illyria and Anduin. So these two, they've, I mean, they're, they're running a bit, right, from some of the wounds of their past, but in the end, they're going to find hope and redemption. So, you know, Illyria, we've seen her uh, new design that really reflects the duality of her character. And Anduin, uh, we saw him in our cinematic, and he just looks, you know, a little more haggard. He's, he's been through a lot lately. He grows beard. <laughs> yeah, he's working so, on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the name The War Within is one that has a couple of layers to it. Right? Obviously, we're literally delving beneath the surface of Azeroth and going to be battling within our world. But this is also a story that involves a lot of inner turmoil and inner conflict. And Anduin is probably the most torn of any of our, our cast of heroes, given what he went through in the Shadowlands. And his journey into the darkness as he seeks to rediscover his own light is a big part of the narrative arc. And with The War Within, there's new zones. Can we talk about what our new zones are going to be? The continent as a whole that begins on the surface and extends beneath the Earth, right, is isn't we're calling Khazalgar. This is an ancient home to the Earthen. It's actually just off the west coast of Pandaria, about between Pandaria and Kalimdor. You know, just a, you know, a couple hundred nautical miles away from a certain sword that's sticking oh. out of the southern end of Kalimdor. But yes, home to four zones um, with amazing varied settings. Yeah, uh, so our first zone, uh, the Isle of Dorne. This is basically, you'll find an isolated group of Earthen there. And so they have their awesome city, Dornogal, which we're very excited to, for players to check out. That'll be the hub in the end. Uh, the second zone is the Ringing Deeps. So, you know, the evocative of like mine picks, industry. And so this is the heart of Earthen industry. But it's not all just, you know, lava and fire. It's uh, mixed with these beautiful caverns, cenotes with uh, light and water coming in creating these uh, you know, lush spaces for the players to enjoy. And then uh, we go to Howlafall. Howlafall is where we really uh, wanted to break expectations. I right, like this one. Uh, this is Arathi airships. Right, underground airships, right? It's the first thing you'd naturally <laughs> think of when you're going under the surface. How are they going to get around? Well, airships, of course. Of course. <laughs> And then our final zone is Ashkahet. So this is the heart of the Nerubian Empire. This is where we'll finally be able to see the Nerubians in all of their strength and glory, like with the height of their civilization. I think uh, we'll get into the details of Alpha later, but everyone's journey is going to start in the Isle of Dorne. But I really can't wait until we get to Hallowfall in our testing. And I think the, you know, Tina mentioned that this crystal, it is such a striking visual element that dominates the zone. Imagine in this place deep within the earth, a radiant crystal of light. And the way, you know, as it illuminates the surroundings that actually plays with the environment and some of the spawns and how the world around it reacts to it. And I think when we set out to create this underground space, 
we knew that one of the risks was that it could feel oppressive, that people didn't want to feel the sense of claustrophobia of you're always in caves. Mm -hmm. Hallowfall really from the outset was built to be a place where Honestly, unless you fly all the way up to check out the ceiling above you, it doesn't feel underground. It feels like you could be outdoors in some vast welcoming area that's just, it's incredibly epic. When we arrive to the Isle of Dorne, what's the first thing we'll see? Well, so you're gonna see something a bit different in Alpha from when the expansion goes live. There is an expansion intro experience that is not currently being tested. It's something that has some you know, cool narrative elements that we want players to all experience together later in the year when War Within launches. But players will spawn in, in the Alpha, on the Isle of Dorne, surrounded by some debris that will look pretty familiar and pretty distinctive, and really is the scars of an initial battle that seems like it didn't end so well. Um, and the beginning of our journey, as, as, many, as with many expansions, is a bit of a mystery, a bit of an investigation of, of arriving in a strange land, having this threat that we face, these visions, these whispers that heroes around Azeroth have been hearing in, in recent months, but trying to understand the nature of the threat we face, how we're going to stop it, and our journey begins on the doorstep of these ancient earthen people who are going to begin, you know, helping us figure out where to go next. They're gonna become our next allied race too, right? Once we are in their trust, that's for <laughs> sure. Is there any other NPCs that we're gonna be familiar with? Yeah, there are gonna be uh, some characters that we haven't seen in World of Warcraft in a while, but will be, you know, part of this story. Uh, that's because of their, you know, dwarven heritage and, you know, Magni, he hears the Radiant Song. He brings some of his family members along. Uh, Moira, who is leader of the Dark Iron Dwarves and heir to Ironforge. Uh, she'll be here with her son, Dagran, who is now a young adult. Uh, Dagran, the last time we saw him in game, he was this pretty generic looking dwarven baby. But now, uh, you know, the dark iron heritage is starting to show more in his appearance, along with his personality. So he has a bunch of these scrolls and books, like really showing that he has a very scholarly nature. I think one of, the, one of the fun aspects of just world building and narrative in WoW is we have this vast array of characters and champions and heroes and, and you know backup characters. And whenever we figure out where we're going, what the next natural location is, what the story elements are, the first question we ask is, who needs to be here? Who does it make sense to have answer this call, want to step forward? Just as when we were dealing with you know, the Green Dragonflight or the Emerald Dream mm -hmm. or, or the like, okay, this is time for Malfurion and Tyrande to step forward. Now that we're going to this ancestral homeland of the Earthen with this ancient connection to the Dwarven legacy of Azeroth, this is a time for our Dwarves to take center stage. All right, so let's talk about the eight new dungeons in the War Within. What are your guys' favorites or the notable ones you want to talk about? Well, so one, let's see, one that's fun to talk about is actually probably the first dungeon the players are going to see in their journeys, and it's going to be tested early on in the Alpha. This is the Rookery Dungeon in the Isle of Dorne. The Rookery is the place where the Storm Griffins were raised and trained by the ancient Earthen over, over the centuries. Um, you know, dwarves and griffins go hand in hand, and the Earthen have a legacy of storm riders that you know we got to see a little sneak peek of. If you, you know, got the War Within Heroic Edition, you might have been flying around on that guy. There's plenty more where that came from in the Isle of Dorne. And so and this dungeon, of course, is not all peaceful. Uh, it's been overrun by a group of corrupted Earthen known as the Skarden. And we're going to be just beginning to understand where they came from and what their nature is as we fight through it. But one cool thing about this dungeon is that it's actually part of the main campaign as you play through Isle of Dorne. Now, I know some people mm -hmm. are instantly saying, wait a minute, I don't like doing dungeons. I just like solo questing. That's terrible. Well, fortunately, in 1025, towards the end of Dragonflight, we introduced this feature called Follower Dungeons. And we're really happy to bring that to the level up dungeons in War Within right from the outset so that you can go in solo with NPC allies as you play through the dungeon, if that's what you prefer. Or, of course, you can just queue up with regular with, with friends or random group mates through the group finder. But what this lets us do is, where appropriate, we can really have the story flow directly through dungeons in a way that we couldn't in the past, in ways that at times was frankly awkward, because sometimes mm -hmm. major villains die in dungeons. Dungeons are places of great importance in a zone, but we couldn't really tie them directly into the questing because we didn't want to create an obstacle for players who really just prefer to keep playing solo. Tina, is there anything that you like? 
One of my favorites is in Hallowfall. So it's called the Priory of the Sacred Flame and it's this Erethor Monastery. So uh, one of the coolest parts is the final boss room. There's this giant uh, window that frames the crystal that is embedded in the ceiling of Hallowfall. And so I love, you know, the beauty of the room as well as just how it ties in with the narrative of the story as a whole. And another really cool one, it's the City of Threads. So this one is underneath the Nerubian city proper. And so it's really uh, interesting to see the ancient civilization that the newer civilization was built on top of. And just to think about the layers of Nerubian history that, you know, is in this land. Is it that the, na the ancient civilization back in like Lich King? Even Far before oh, that, it's even, even farther before that. Yeah, the Nerubians, I think, you know, we might think of them as monstrous or arachnid. They are one of the great powers, one of the great advanced civilizations of Azeroth, right? Up there with wow. the, you know, elves and trolls and the others that helped shape the course of, of the world's history. We've only really seen hints of them going back to, to Wrath, if you ran the Azjol Nerub or Ankehet dungeons, you could see, you know, their buildings off in the in the background. But you know, they were a civilization that at its height rivaled the High Elves and the Nightborn on the surface. That's insane. They were able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Lich King's armies and win until the Old Gods and you know, their forces on another flank eventually led to the Nerubians being overwhelmed. But really being able to explore what they're all about is one of the things we're most excited about when it comes to War Within. One of the things we're excited to uh, bring is an arachnophobia filter, if you will. For all of you out there who uh, could never, you know, go to that spider section in Nax, uh, you'll be able to turn on our arachnophobia filter and all uh, spider beasts will turn into crabs. So very pumped about that. <laughs> yeah, it actually looks, it, it, it works way better than you might think just hearing okay. that sentence. I can't wait for players to you know, be able to jump in, turn it on and, you know, hopefully feel more comfortable in parts of our world. You know, this is something that when we announced the Nerubian-centric themes of War Within at BlizzCon, we heard trepidation from portions of our community who love WoW, but were worried they weren't going to be able to experience it. Honestly, prior to that, it's something we heard concerns about from within our own team, where there are, you know, people who genuinely felt uncomfortable with these elements of the game that we were building together. And so we set out to try to find a solution that would still, you know, preserve the fidelity of the game, but really make it more approachable, more accessible to everyone. So speaking of the Nerubians, once we reach level 80, we're going to go to the new raid, Nerubo Palace. Uh, is there anything you want to speak about that? Yeah, this raid is epic in so many ways. Uh, one of the coolest parts is there's this beautiful uh, showpiece uh, that is just in front of the Queen's Palace. It represents the Nerubian race and it just shows how highly Queen Ensrek thinks of her people and herself. This raid will get, one of the sections of the raid will get to check out her innermost sanctum. This is where, you know, only uh, VIPs for the Nerubians get to go and you really get to explore the dark elegance of her palace. I think, again, as we were just saying, like the Nerubians, we need to remember they are an advanced race, very, you know, just this epic civilization. I think there's some parallels probably to going back to the Nightborn in Suramar and what going into that city and that palace felt like. We really want to show the sophistication here. It's, this is not a monstrous supervillain lair. This is, you know, a, a superpower of Azeroth that we find ourselves, you know, facing off against. But yeah, the, the Queen Anserek encounter that Tina mentioned, she's going to be the end boss of sort of the initial season, the initial raid tier. Uh, the encounter team is hard at work on this one. I can't wait to see it tested later on in beta. Um, this is, you know, the, the whole room is really purpose built to showcase some vertical elements. And, you know, just it's just an incredible set piece. But we want to, as always, integrate the environment wherever possible into our encounters. So you're facing off against both, you know, a very powerful magical user, but also someone who is arachnid in nature. Mm -hmm. And how do we kind of deliver parts of the fantasy of, you know, scaling a web while locked in combat against the queen? Those are the things that we're currently exploring. Can't wait to see that up for testing. Does that mean we're gonna get tier sets again? Certainly. I think well, last time we tried taking them away, I recall <laughs> torches and pitchforks in the street. New tier means new tier sets. And these days, you know, unlike years and years ago when you only had, when you had to raid in order to get the tier set, now you can get them from a wide array of activities, whether you're a raider, Mythic Plus player, or an outdoor world player, which includes now delves. 
Ah, Delves. Let's get let's start talking about Delves. Yeah, I mean, Delves are one of the major new features in War Within, and I think we're really excited to offer a, a more structured, progression-oriented extension of the outdoor world gameplay that we know is the favorite of so many of our players. And you know, Delves are these seamless experiences integrated into all of our zones, where you can have these localized, varied adventures alongside in the first season, Brand Bronzebeard, either on your own or with friends. Um, and finally, you know, get a shot at some endgame epic rewards just through an extension of the outdoor world ecosystem. Yeah, we'll be able to get it from the Great Wall, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, super exciting. So one of our goals with building Delves was we really wanted the player to just feel like they adventured, came across a place and could just, you know, go in and see what's inside. You, when you walk up to the Delve, there's this, you know, dark misty door and you click on it and then it just disappears and you just walk into your own personal Delve instance. So very excited about that. I mean, players are going to see how that first experience on the Isle of Dorne early in the Alpha. Uh, the first Delve they're likely to encounter is Earthcrawl Mines. You're going to encounter your good friend Bran Bronzebeard outside an ancient earthen mine that has been overrun with Nerubians who are borrowing up from the depths. Bran will ask you if you want him to outfit himself as a, as a healer or as a damage dealer to help support you. And you'll venture in and have your very first Delve experience. Um, you'll be able to choose whether you want to do it on Tier 1 or Tier 2 difficulty. Tier 1 is kind of the default. This is for everyone experience. Tier 2 is for those who want to opt into a bit more of a challenge because that's what they enjoy. Uh, there will be higher tiers that can be unlocked at max level as part of the end game and seasonal progression. And we really just can't wait to get player feedback from the outset, really all through Alpha, on this new system, on you know how it is or isn't working for you, and whether we can you know, really meet everyone's expectations from people who just want a casual romp as an extension of their outdoor world experience to those who want a solo progression challenge that they can really strive to overcome. Um, feedback is going to really help shape how this evolves, but we're so excited about Delves as a central part of War Within. Yeah, I'm excited that we're going to be able to just jump in and get our, like go solo with Bran, or you can have friends, but also just get rewards in that way, especially the tier sets with the Catalyst, exactly. and then that really cool mechanical mount. <laughs> yeah, so this is going to kind of be an introduction to the, sort of the Delves endgame. As you hit max level, as you hit 80, and start to get a sense of the Delves ecosystem, right at the start of that, we're going to give you this epic customizable mount, kind of the, the successor to the customizable drakes you had in Dragon Isles, where you'll be able to, through doing Delves, earn a variety of different customizations and attachments that you can mix and match to really create your own personalized flying mount. So does this mechanical mount have dynamic flying? This is one of the big questions we had moving on from Dragonflight. We had the question of like, well, okay, dragon riding is amazing. Mm -hmm. We're in, we can't get rid of this. Mm -mm. But how is this going to work alongside of the hundreds of mounts that we already have in players' collections? And how, from a design perspective, how do we navigate a world where some mounts can fly in this awesome way and others can only do the old quote-unquote static flight? Uh, fortunately, I think our art team was able to work out an amazing solution for us. Yeah, we were very excited to be able to make pretty much all mounts be able to dynamically fly. So even Nimron's head, Ian, we figured it out. <laughs> we made it work. So I'm really excited to see <laughs> Nimron's head going like super fast. <laughs> Another feature coming in the War Within that I'm really excited about, as well as a lot of other people, is Warbands. Yeah, Warbands, I mean, again, I think as I summarized it at BlizzCon, it's just account-wide everything, mm -hmm. almost everything. Uh, it, this, you know, players increasingly play multiple characters. And this is something we've heard loud and clear that you know the game needs to be more alt-friendly. The players want to be able to choose where they spend their time across their different characters instead of feeling like they have to reprogress everything individually. And so yeah, the Warband is just, it is your account in its entirety. It is your collection of champions, whether they're Horde or Alliance, regardless of what realm they're on, they're all part of the same Warband, which gives access to various shared progression systems. And then you get to see all of your favorites on uh, you know, one screen together. So uh, in our new UI, we'll have warbands and you'll be like, you know, move four up into that space and see them all hanging out around a campfire. Is that on the character select screen? Yeah, the character select oh, screen. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's going to be totally different than what we're used to logging in. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. You'll, you'll know, like, this is a completely different world. It's a completely different welcome into World of Warcraft. Um, what we showed off at BlizzCon was just actually a UI mock-up but we're excited to see people react to the real thing. And really, as with everything else, you know, Warbands are a foundation. They're, this is a system that we want to build the next generations of World of Warcraft on. Now, in 2004, 
WoW launched with everything character-based. In 2024, WoW is going to shift to everything being account-based. And we can't wait to hear feedback about what other areas we can expand upon here. And that's going to shape not just War Within, but later updates and expansions. And we're just, you know, just excited about this platform that better reflects the way our players are looking to play World of Warcraft today. You can't forget about PvP. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Uh, so we have a new battleground called the Deep Hall. This one is earthen themed. It's a bit of a mashup between a Silver Shard Mines and a Matthew Basin. So, you know, hold some points, push some carts. Uh, we're really excited to see how players uh, navigate around this one. Yeah, and in terms of how players are interacting with it, um, there is an overhaul to our rated battleground system that is coming with War Within. Uh, people who've been paying attention over the course of Dragonflight have checked out our uh, Battleground Blitz, our kind of brawl that was testing out a 8v8 solo queue rated Battleground format. We're happy to move to that as a default for how rated Battlegrounds are going to work going forward. I think we're really excited to make that Battleground experience that personally I've always felt is the best part of WoW PvP, that larger scale, more cooperative, objective-based, um, you know, collaborative, competitive setting as opposed to the deathmatch style in Arena to make that more accessible to everyone who, you know, loves Battlegrounds, loves PvP. Um, we know, you know, it's a bit overdue, honestly, us mm -hmm. adding a new Battleground map into the rotation, and we're excited to do more of this going forward. We're excited to have a new framework that can make Battlegrounds more central to the end game rewarding part of PvP. And yeah, this is just you know, the beginning of a new chapter. Another feature in the War Within is hero talents. We've been having a lot of articles talking about them. What are some of the other things that we can expect with the hero talents coming forward? Well, I can say there's going to be no more blogs and articles releasing hero talents because they'll be there for you to jump in and play. And I think that's you know the, mo the most exciting thing. We're so grateful to the community for all of the feedback and discussion in recent months, going back to the first blog in December. This really helped us shape this central feature of how people's class gameplay is going to evolve. Um, you're going to see hero talents that you haven't yet seen for the trees that we haven't discussed previously. And for many of the ones that we have released, you'll log in and see changes that are directly shaped by your feedback, uh, by what we heard loud and clear in some cases about what was and wasn't exciting. Um, we, we've committed to have as many of these playable right from the outset as possible. We will have 100% of the hero talent trees available and playable not long into alpha. And then the rest of the journey is going to be about iteration, tuning, and really just dialing it all in to make the polished experience that everyone is excited about. So what are we doing with professions in the War Within? Uh, I think when we really overhauled professions in Dragonflight, we saw that as, as a kind of a permanent shift in how professions were going to work going forward. So you can expect you know, new recipes, different enchants, but the same fundamental sort of progression and structure to professions that you saw in Dragonflight. One big piece of feedback that we heard throughout Dragonflight, though, was a bit of frustration with the work order system from crafters who were just looking to complete quests, looking to skill up, but found themselves competing and often racing to grab work orders with their fellow crafters. Um, so what we're excited to offer is a baseline availability of basically NPC crafting orders. Uh, so it could be you know, Earthen in Isle of Dorne who need a hammer made or need a helmet made, and they're constantly putting their offer, their work orders up onto the, onto the market, so there's always something for you to grab. The player ones will still be more lucrative, but there should always be that baseline availability if you just want to skill up, you just want to practice your trade skill. And there's also some cool potential for narrative tie-ins, the ability to have quests that now can point you towards that system, because we can count on it always being there. So with Dragonflight and the profession overhaul, there was also a UI overhaul. Is there anything we're going to see with the War Within? Yeah, so the UI overhaul, it's basically a continued improvements that we want to make over time. One of the things that I'm very excited about is the uh, quest bang over, uh, overhaul. So we're going to have a bunch of new icons that will make uh, what type of quest it is much more clear. One of the new ones that you'll see is one that's like we consider an important one. These aren't campaign, but they're pretty important to your character. For instance, some uh, that must do ones for your profession or ones where you're going to unlock the revival catalyst. Yeah, I think as we've leaned more and more into outdoor world gameplay and varied gameplay there, different types of public events over the course of Dragonflight, Honestly, we reached a point about halfway through Dragonflight where we just took a look at our map and kind of recoiled in horror at the number of different icons that were there. And it was just a kind of icon soup situation that made us say, like, it's kind of at this point, 
we've advanced far past the world of, oh, you just have some daily quests or world quests here. We need a clearer visual language. And so really excited to just evolve that central interface that players use to log in and see what there is to do in WoW on a given day. So that covers the War Within, and the alpha is starting extremely soon. Pretty much working on getting it stood up <laughs> as we speak, as we sit here right now. And yeah, so the way this is going to work is pretty similar to the Dragonflight alpha for those who, who followed that, where really each week, each new build that we release, we're focusing on a different piece of War Within to concentrate player feedback and our attention to just really get all that feedback in and maximize the quality. So we're going to start off zone by zone, level band by level band. This first week is going to be the Isle of Dorne, level 70 to 73 or so, the dungeon and delves there, as well as universal systems like Hero Talents. With successive alpha builds, we'll move on to other zones, other portions of War Within, um, inviting more waves of people. If you haven't gone to the website to opt in yet, that's a great reminder to do so. <laughs> um, we you know, really pick from, really, true, there's no secret to it. We're just randomly pulling lots of folks in and hope to get, by the end of this, countless people into our testing. Um, once we've gotten through all of those rounds of focus testing, we'll move into our beta phase which really is an end-to-end -end holistic test of War Within from 70 all the way to 80 and the end game and beyond. And throughout, you know, feedback, bug reports, suggestions, all of this is instrumental mm -hmm. to helping turn what we have now into the finished product that we want to be the best it possibly can be for all of our players later this year. Thank you so much for joining me for the War Within. And thank you for joining us for this. Really, this is one of the most exciting times ever for the development team, when we get to pull back the curtain and welcome you all into this world that we've been building in the last few years. So can't wait to see you in the alpha, and can't wait to hear all of your feedback. Really looking forward to everyone checking out what we built. Thank you so much. See you guys in the alpha.